Hey guys, Pandemonium here. Did you ever wonder how to properly use public variables? No? Me neither. <laughs> you must be kidding, aren't you? But seriously though, is there even a proper way to use public variables? Well, today we're gonna find out. Let's dig in, shall we? In our example, we have two public variables, a transform for the destination of a player and a float for the movement speed. So let's take a look at these two. If we move back into Unity, you will see our player, who is very cool. But if you pay attention to the player movement script, you'll see that both of our public variables are visible in the inspector and we can assign their value. So this is the first trait of public variables in Unity. Now let's quickly assign all the variables and take a look at our example project. When I press play, the player will proudly start hopping towards its destination. I can also change the speed variable during runtime and the player will go faster. But the changes that you make will not be saved when you exit play mode, so keep that in mind. The next trait of public variables is the fact that they can be accessed and changed by outside scripts. For example, in my game manager script, I created a start method that after 3 seconds sets the player speed to zero. So, in this case, the player will hop on for a little while before getting stuck in place. Now, obviously, getting access to variables from outside scripts can be very useful. But the downside is the fact that once your project gets bigger, it will become harder and harder for you to keep track of all your public variables. You may start encountering more bugs, more unexpected behaviors, and generally you will spend more time trying to figure out what happened. So let's take a look at a couple safeguards that will help you keep control over your public variables. First of all, let's talk about properties, which are marked with get and set. As soon as I type them in, you'll see a number of references appear above this variable. And if you click on this text, you'll see exactly where this variable was used or modified. The first reference that you see is inside Game Manager, and if you double-click it, Visual Studio will take you exactly there. Needless to say, this makes keeping track of your public variables much, much easier. Okay, that's the basic part of it. Now let's look into it a bit deeper. Get means that this variable can be accessed by outside scripts and set means that it can be changed from outside scripts. But if we add the private keyword before set, this means that this variable cannot be changed from outside scripts anymore. And if you go into the game manager now, you'll see an error that says that the set accessor of this variable is inaccessible. So now we have much tighter control over this variable, which means less potential problems, but we still give the other scripts the ability to read this variable and what its value is. So, if we go back into Game Manager now, we can still check what the value of speed is. So, for example, we can create an if statement that checks if the speed is zero, and if that's the case, we're gonna print a simple message saying that the player is not moving. Alright, I think you see the benefits of using properties at this point. The only downside to this is the fact that you can no longer see the value of this property inside Unity, even if you use just get set. As you can see, we no longer have the speed variable underneath the destination, so we cannot change its value. But there is a workaround for this as well, so let's check it out. First, we need to create a private float variable called underscore speed, and we will serialize this one to make it visible in the editor. Now let's make some tweaks to our public speed variable. First, we're gonna make sure that when we are trying to get this variable, we're gonna return the underscore speed variable, which is private. And when we're trying to set it, we're also going to change the value of the underscore speed variable. So, the private variable that we just created acts as a placeholder, but because it has serialized field, we can also see it in the inspector. And in case you want to change the default speed value, you just need to assign it to the private variable. Now let's go back into Unity, and you will see that the speed field will appear again. And as you might expect, if we change its value, it will directly affect the movement speed. And to cap the video off, here's a short summary of everything we just talked about. Let me know if you like this type of shorter videos where I explain more general stuff. And if you want me to cover a certain topic, leave a comment down below. If you have a couple of spare bucks and you want to help me stay more consistent and make more videos, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It would make a big difference for me. And finally, I want to give a huge shout out to all the Patreons and all the viewers in general. You guys are amazing. That's it. Go make some games now.